Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of our Lunchtime Learning webinar series. My name is Brennan Woodruff. I'm the Director of Sustainability at the New York State DEC. And I'm really happy to have you here for our December event this month. We've got a really fantastic presentation today from Jody Smith Anderson at DASNY, who under a number of trying circumstances is here, and we're really happy for her. She's been a great part of the Green New York team, um, and we're, we're happy to have her uh, here today presenting on this. So a couple housekeeping things before we get started today. Everybody is on mute when you enter the webinar. So if you do have any questions as we go along, type them into the chat box. We're going to get to everything uh, at the end. So just type any questions, comments, thoughts, tips you have in there, and we'll get to them. This meeting is also being recorded, and it will be put up on the Green New York website afterwards. I've put a link in the chat to where you can find the recordings of the webinars as well as um, where you can register for upcoming ones as well. And just a quick programming note, next month's webinar is going to be an IMAP invasive species training. That's a program that helps folks identify uh, invasive species and report them. It's a great citizen science um, component in program. So it's a way that you can help uh, DEC folks and others control the spread of invasive species throughout the state. So that's going to be on January 11th at noon. And without further ado, I want to hand over today to Jody Smith Anderson, who's going to talk to us about how to have less paper in our lives. This is great. I'm so glad to be able to talk about this. Um, uh, qualifiers before we begin paper is probably one of the least burdensome things that we have to control in our lives. Um, if you have an option of paper over plastic, absolutely take the paper. <laughs> so, so that's just to kind of weigh in. We're not saying that paper is bad. In many cases, it's the preferable choice. In some cases, it's needed. And we should always remember that, that the strategies that we're talking about are ways for you to explore, to find out what you can achieve to reduce the paper burden, if it's burdening you, um, and to reduce waste, and to reduce especially uh, treating resources as single use disposable items, because I think that's our biggest cultural problem is we, we look for in the moment convenience to be more important than a long term respect for the systems we live in. So I put together just a list of a whole bunch of things that in my life that I'm trying to reduce paper wise. And I put them in all these nice little sticky notes on a computer and we're going to go through them. Uh, I, I kept the words kind of brief and I want you to feel free to add into the chat. Your comments on these approaches or other resources you found, because my experience is not going to cover all possibilities by any means. So, 1 of the 1st things, it, this is a, a, a nice little joke in our house because. Uh, my husband's insurance company was bought by CVS. And so every time someone makes a joke about a CVS receipt, it lands like a big lead balloon. <laughs> but it's it has become a joke. I actually saw um, CVS receipts, scarves for sale, uh, all kinds of things about how long these receipts are. So paper receipts are really on their way out. Which is good because not only are they paper, but a lot of the inks used in receipt printing are still toxic. So some of the solutions include getting emailed receipts. Um, if you're nervous about email receipts, which a lot of people are, their connection to purchases through your personal email can lead to being on lists and getting emails that you don't want. You can self note in, in any kind of list for your own purposes, the money you've spent and where you've spent it. I use a, a, an app on my phone called Toshel Finance, which has a, I don't know, a reasonable fee, like $20 a year or $30 a year. And it's a personal financial management system and you can create categories. So if you go to the grocery store, you can just type in groceries, 62 bucks and the date and you can start to see your spending habits in addition to avoiding that paper receipt. Now, the trick is the places that you shop often, you need to say to them, don't print out a receipt before they print out a receipt. <laughs> uh, 
And that doesn't always happen, but over time we can get there. And just a note I put in here, you should always check your credit card statements and your PayPal statements to make sure that that they're valid and, and you're not getting hit for things that you didn't expect. Um, we had a few scares recently, but mostly because uh, my son lives in Brooklyn and he used PayPal to pay for dinner and we didn't know it was him. And I think I just noticed, did I spell receipts wrong on this page? It's quite possible. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. So reducing receipts, they don't seem like a lot, but this time of year, I'm sure they, they build up. Okay, here's a controversy. <laughs> I, I love my independent bookstores. I love paper books. I love my Kindle. I have, I even made a cover for my Kindle and it's, this cover is three years old. So this Kindle has been through a lot. I probably read two or 300 books a year. And um, when I go on vacation, I want to take several with me anyway. Well, this is a lot lighter than hauling around those books. So I love the Kindle for many, many reasons. So store some books on Kindle that you might not need to keep in paper and donate those books. That's a great idea. Understand that sometimes you want the actual paper book, and that's an okay thing too. None of these choices are this or that. They're, hey, what in what circumstance does it make sense to reduce paper? The key is that a lot of people get frustrated because they don't know how to share books on Kindle. It's a simple Google search and the, and the steps come up about how to share with a friend or how to, and I'm going to go to the next screen, how to borrow from a local library, which I think is really cool. If you get in, if you type in overdrive.com, you can search for your library system. And if you have a library card and, and a library um, account, you can borrow books from your local library onto your Kindle. And I think that's incredibly powerful. And you can select a, a time frame for borrowing and then it will disappear off your Kindle or you won't have access anymore when the time comes. Through overdrive.com, it, it goes through a process that's really clear as to how to connect and how to find books at your local library. So I'm not gonna go through all those steps here, but I encourage you to check that out. It will revitalize your reading habits support your local library, and, uh, and then also at the same time, reduce paper, which I think is quite powerful. The next thing I have on here is catalogs. This is actually a picture of my floor after I went through a pile of catalogs and newspapers that had accumulated in our bathroom <laughs> for occasional bathroom reading, as it were. Every purchase puts you on a list. You know, AARP, I'm, uh, I get magazines. I'm an architect, so I get like three publications that I never asked for. Um, Model Railroader and Consumer Reports, we get those magazines. And the frustration is we, my husband prefers to read those digitally. You can't get them only digitally. You can get them in paper or you can get paper and digital. The world is changing though, so that will change over time. And the more people who ask the question, how do I just get this digitally, the faster we'll get to that transition. In the shorter term, you actually can control this in a couple of ways. And the most successful that I found is called catalog choice. And this is a screenshot of a couple that I've, I've, I've actually, a couple ca catalogs that I had catalog choice ditch um, from being delivered to me. And granted, it takes a, uh, you know, a couple of weeks for it to activate. Catalog choice is part of the story of stuff world. If you go in there and, and you, you create a, a, a free account, you um, it's donation based so after you type in a couple of different magazines or subscriptions or not magazines catalogs and you say i want to stop getting this catalog they follow through and either send you 
to the website and give you the language you should use to get off of their lists and stop receiving those catalogs, or they do it for you depending on the access capabilities. After you've done a couple of them, a screen will pop up that says, can you donate $10, $25, whatever. You don't have to donate. You're encouraged to donate. It is the story of stuff and it is catalogs choice. I donated $25 yesterday, I think. But it's pretty amazing. It's not something that you'll only have to do once because every time, for example, I buy a pair of pajamas from Pajamagram, they're sending me catalogs every month and a half. So then I have to get off their list again. So this is a, a point in the in the paper reduction struggle that also helps us understand buy local when possible, know your real retailers, don't necessarily purchase online unless you're willing to fight that burden of additional paper and 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 information that you didn't ask for. Your local real real retailers, sorry, my tongue got stuck there for a second, probably won't burden you with all that stuff or they'll ask you <laughs> and you can say no. So a little bit of silliness in the middle of this talk. I don't know who of you have seen the movie Brazil, but there's this absolutely wonderful scene where this guy is running through the center of the city and papers start swirling around because it's all about bureaucracy and 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 all the papers we create and he gets subsumed by these papers and then these people come over to help him because he's totally covered in paper and they start pulling the paper away and they finally pull all the paper away and there's nobody there anymore he was eaten by paper and sometimes i feel that's true <laughs> we get eaten by our paper in fact I moved out of um, DASNY and I'm starting a new job this week. And I, even though I do everything electronically, I realized that I still had three boxes of paper that were from the job I had before DASNY that I had brought with me to DASNY and put on the shelf. Mostly things like people's business cards and, uh, and projects I had been involved with that were done in paper that I wanted to hold on to. I haven't looked at them in at least 10 years, but I packed them up and brought them home with me. And now I'm wondering if I have the strength to dispose of those papers or should I store them again for the next job I have? I'm not sure. <laughs> Deliveries. This is a big deal. Delivery boxes, another amount of paper that gets into your house and I didn't do a screen for this, but um, domestic cardboard and all of the cereal boxes and all of the cracker boxes and the, the tea, uh, tea bag boxes. These are things that we can also diminish in our home. And one way to stop those from coming in, if you're ordering from Amazon, for example, they do have an option for slower delivery in fewer boxes, reduce your number of boxes. Click that as often as you're able to. This does a couple of things. It reduces the number of boxes that come into your house, but it also helps our, and I'm gonna be a little harsh here, our consumer addiction, and I, I'm part of this, <laughs> fair, I'm, I'm definitely part of this. It helps to send the signal that we don't need everything to be delivered overnight. The, the, the overnight delivery is a, an environmental burden that we, we haven't even, recognized yet. It has changed a lot for the worse as far as the environment. So ask for slower delivery if you can. Um, make that your default as much as possible. And then again, another nudge to buying local or from independent sellers because the speed is going to be reduced, which is a benefit to our travel systems and a benefit to our cons to to weaning ourselves from our consumer uh, fast turnaround addictions. Um, one company I buy from locally, uh, the first time that I got a delivery from them, it was it felt like such a long delivery time. 
once I remember that it's going to be a week and a half or two weeks, and I factor that in to when I purchase from them, it's not an issue at all. And I think that's really important to remember. Regarding the cereal boxes and the, the cracker boxes and things like that, if you have an opportunity to buy at a grocery store that, that has bulk services or and allows you to bring your own containers in, that can change a lot of things as well. I have done that fairly religiously with, with a few plastics, like I make my own yogurt now, so I don't get plastic containers from the yogurt. We're off of shampoo and conditioner, plastic bottles, we do bars. So that's, that's just an example of how you can also reduce packaging, reduce paper packaging by buying in bulk. If you buy grains, by filling your own glass jars or tin jars or bags, and you buy cereals from bulk, bulk aisles, that can make a big difference too to your residential cardboard recycling. So these are some things that maybe um, maybe we get we're getting a little more into the the weeds here, but I, I kind of like it. I've started carrying around a, a a cloth handkerchief in my pocket. Now, if you have a cold or if, you know, you know, you're, you're feeling sniffles that are, are not just weather related or dust related, you probably don't want to be using a cloth handkerchief. But for the most part, when I'm riding my bike into the office or walking down the street a, a couple of blocks over to get my groceries and the cold hits me and I, I, I my nose is a little sniffly, I take out the cloth handkerchief and wipe my nose and tuck it back in my pocket and it's not a big deal. I wash it with my clothes later in the week. And we seriously have cut our tissue use by about 60% just from me carrying cloth handkerchiefs in my pocket. And again, I have a spelling error here. My great apologies. Embroidered is needs an I in there. So um, the box that's pictured here, the little green thing on the left is a silicone box. I actually don't think I have mine at the table right now, but that's pretty handy. It's got a little flap inside. So when you pull a, a clean handkerchief out of the bottom, you can use it once if you like, and you can stick it back in the top and it stays separate from the clean ones. And then when that flap gets all the way down to the bottom, you just take all of those handkerchiefs out to wash them. So that's that's a really good system as well, and a little more similar to pulling tissues out of a box. So you still have that feel that you're only using a tissue once, and that's great. It's also kind of, I, tissues are kind of blah. I mean, you can have really cool, forget a decorative pocket square, how about an actual functioning decorative handkerchief for guys? and and cool colors, they're light and washable, and they're safe for you and the planet. Check out some, some tissue action there, some handkerchiefs. Um, in line with this, and I didn't put this in a slide because it, 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 it might be too personal, <laughs> but I'm gonna say it anyway. During the great toilet paper shortage at the start of COVID, we decided to invest in a, in a, in a bidet assemblage to go on top of our toilet, which means that we've reduced our toilet paper usage by about half. The only reason we still use toilet paper is because we don't want to be there long enough to dry off. <laughs> so that's an interesting thing that can reduce paper usage as well. Now, I don't have stats on how on how much of the deforestation is tied directly to toilet paper and tissue usage, but it is significant. So that's something to be aware of. That's not a clutter issue. That's an environmental issue. And of course you can't put those things typically into your compost because they are often chlorine bleach processed. If you have a chance to at least find non-chlorine bleach processed tissues in toilet paper, you'll be doing the planet a favor. So now we're on, you know, domestic papers. What about paper towels and napkins? 
cloth napkins are my jam. We've got a, a nice little bowl on our table with all of our napkin rings and our cloth napkins suitable to grab for any meal, any time, even delivery. Now that's the thing that has bothered me most and the clutter that has appeared in our house uh, to be almost insurmountable is the amount of utensils and paper products that I never asked for that come with food delivery. So the only recommendation I have there is when you order through Melio or which is more local than Grubhub, so choose Melio, or you order directly from the restaurant on their website, which is the best thing to do. You put in the notes, if you have any possibility to say, hey, no utensils, no extra napkins, please keep that stuff. We don't need it. If things are getting delivered to your home, you probably have the utensils and hopefully the cloth napkins at hand. So, all right, our last, I, my last idea, which is why I want you guys to, to put things into the chat as well and have a conversation after this. Another way we've actually reduced a lot of paper is we keep a whiteboard. You can see this has been used for years. <laughs> we used to actually keep our weekly budget on here too and, and try and remember what we shouldn't be spending. Uh, you know, write what you need as, as we see, as you see you need it. And then we take a photo with our phone as we walk out the door to do the shopping. The only key to that is remember to delete the photos from your phone because then they appear in all these memory scrolls. And it's kind of strange to note that half of our lives are grocery lists. <laughs> and it seems we buy a lot of cheese and clementines and chocolate. Not necessarily a bad thing, but there you go. Now, I didn't get into uh, a lot of reducing like papers related to to billing because I think it's very normal now that people move to electric billing, electronic billing, but but remind yourselves to do that. There are some things that that you just get in the habit of writing a check or a habit of paying when you see the paper bill. We still have to get our Amex uh, to be fully paperless. It took a long time for us to get our financial manager to be fully paperless. And I think it was our fault more than theirs because we would get notices from them change over to paperless. And we just didn't realize we had to make the effort. So that's an important thing to note. Um, that is about all I have to offer you guys today, but I hope there have been some uh, bits of information in there that are of use. And Brendan, if you want to open up, I can stop sharing and then we can open up the chat. That would be excellent. Let's see if I can. Yes, sounds good. Thank you very much, Jody. That was a fantastic and, and thorough presentation there of, of different areas where, and it's amazing how many different areas of our lives paper is involved with. Yeah, um, it is. And how many different types of paper. So um, we've got some comments and we've got some questions in here as well. Um, so there's one person who said that their library branch adds a no receipt record on your account. Um, and so most of the time when they check out a book, they won't print a receipt. So that's a, that's a great thing to know. Yeah. So that's something to ask your libraries. Cause that's true. Anytime I've taken a book out recently, I always get a little printed receipt there. Um, somebody else said that, um, they always buy used books whenever possible. Um, great from places that uh, do kind of charity work with that, charity shops and things like that. Um, that's another great way to donate your books as well. And actually, just to, to add into that, um, what I've done, uh, I try and go through my bookshelves, I would say about once every two years. I, I have a need for more shelf space, so I have to see where I can make things better. What I have found is that there are some authors that I will reread their books over and over. But if I have paperbacks from them, the paperbacks start to fall apart. And I've been slowly transitioning to Kindle for those. Like I'll, I like the dragon story. So Anne McCaffrey, I would buy one of her books every couple of months until I had all of the books. And then I took all of the books that I had in paper and I donated them all in one go, which is kind of exciting for places receiving donations. 
It's also really kind of cool to grab three or four books that you don't want to keep on your shelf anymore. And when you go for a walk, place them in the little local, the little libraries that have appeared around town. If you live in a walkable community, there's probably a little donation library somewhere. Stock those up too. Especially if you have some sustainability books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so any recommendations on managing digital receipts so they don't get lost in the thousands of bits of mail you get from vendors? Um, especially if you sign up for digital receipts from certain stores, uh, especially for folks who need them for healthcare spending or tax purposes or things like that. So any tips for people on how to manage those? I think the only thing that's worked for me is I created a folder in Outlook that just says purchase information. <clears throat> and I, I, you know what, I'm still trying to make this a habit, but every time I buy anything online or any time I receive a receipt for any kind of purchase and it's an online receipt, I put, put them in that folder and then where the habit is still coming into place about once every six weeks, I go through that folder and find the ones I need to hold on to. It's, I don't know of an actual system that will help make that less, less, um, you know, personal management. It really is a very manual process. Any other thoughts out there? Type them into the chat. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's somebody else who mentioned that they keep a set of bamboo tableware with a cloth drawstring bag uh, in their purse or their car. So they've got it whenever they do get takeout or something. Um, and again, make sure on something like that, that you check off on the app or something else that you don't want the, um, the plastic cutlery. Yeah. Um, somebody else mentioned that their bidet has a dryer, which I did not know exists. Um, <laughs> yeah, mine does too. I just don't like to sit there for very long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've got, um, someone else is saying that, you know, depending on your bank, you can pay somebody back using electronic transfers instead of cash or checks or things like that. So that's another good tip. Yeah. Um, Venmo has come in really handy recently in our lives. So that's another way to not only make payments, but have the tracking of those payments, which has been helpful. And a comment on the, um, the cutlery in the car, I didn't talk about reusable bags um, for, the, for the grocery store or for other shopping. We have found that keeping a half a dozen bags in the car is very useful. Um, the, the issue has always been when we use them and bring them into the house, then they end up in the house and they don't end up back in the car. So having a hook by the door where you can put those bags so you remember them next time you go out could be useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And another good thing too is with the plastic bag ban, um, stores are giving out paper bags. So if you do remember those, then you're uh, avoiding the paper bags. Yeah, if you yeah, if you bring your reuse, reusable is always better um, than the paper bags. If you have the paper bags, uh, you know I am a big believer in not buying um, wrapping paper for for Christmas. And I've done presentations on cloth bags for Christmas gifts. We actually gave I made something like five hundred cloth bags, and we gave sets of fifteen or twenty to all of our friends. One Christmas, <laughs> so here at cloth bags, um, with all fun colors and everything. But you can also use the paper bags from the store. I remember sitting on my floor when I was a kid, wrapping all my school books in the the paper bags. But you can also, you know, to start the school year. But you can also use them as Christmas wrapping and with a a pretty bow or some or some artwork. <laughs> it's quite a nice wrapping. Yeah. So any final thoughts to leave with people today? I think that the thing that I started with is the thing that I'll end with there. It's not that paper is bad and it's not that there's any one way to, to, to approach each circumstance. I'm not saying everyone on this call has to read on Kindle, but I think there are times when we continue to do things out of habit that we could change 
for some uses or some circumstances. And exploring those is actually a lot of fun. Like I didn't even, in, in putting this together, I didn't even think of, I, my husband uses a lot of paper towels. I, I, I didn't even think of getting reusable paper towels. I didn't think of that. And so now I've seen reusable paper towels and I think that it could be really fun and colorful and quite a bit nicer, you know, under our, maybe when we bake when we do bacon once a month to use those then then paper towels to do that and i so that's great i learned something from putting this presentation together that i want to try and see if it works for me so try something yeah. and see if it works for you and i think that's the most important thing is finding what works for you um you know, there's always something out there. Everyone's going to be different. Everyone has different needs, but there's always some way that we can do our own part to uh, limit our um, impact on the planet. Mm. There is a one more question we didn't get to that I see in the chat. Um, who sells the hankies? Catherine, I just actually, um, I, I just Googled and found that, you know, one less tissue or whatever it is. Um, you can also, well, I mean, every store sells handkerchiefs for men. They really still do. It's kind of intense. And some of them are colorful and pretty, and some of them are just the plain white ones. And I've started, I've bought the plain white ones, and a plain white handkerchief can make four smaller tissue-sized pieces, and I hem the edges, and then I've got the tissues that I use in my little silicone box or in my pocket. So that's that's the way I'm doing it. Yeah. And with that, I want to thank you, Jody. This was a fantastic presentation. I want to thank everybody who joined us today. Um, once again, thank you for taking the time to learn more about this stuff. Our next uh, lunchtime learning webinar is going to be on Tuesday, January 11th at noon, and it's going to be a training on the IMAP Invasive Species app. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a happy holidays, a happy new year, and uh, we'll see you in 2022. Have a good one.